Okie doke. All right, we talked about tackle, a little bit about trolling, and so forth. I don't know where we're running on time, man. I, I can let it get away from me, so keep me moving. Uh, I guess the next thing we need to talk about, uh, how are we going to find fish? We said we're going to go two days from now. Where are we going to go? We're going to fish up north. We're going to go down south. Yeah, we're going to fish shallow water. We're going to go out to the deep water. Where are we going to go? Everybody here a member of Frying Pan Tower? Everybody, everybody familiar with it? Everybody familiar with that super map that's on there? Yes? No? no. no. I don't know? Yes. I don't know about a super map. What's okay. On Frying Pan Tower? I know Frying Pan yeah. Tower. FryingPanTower.com. If you go Blue on there on the main map. page, you know, it'll have like forums, weather, <coughs> I don't know, a bunch of stuff. Videos <coughs> or whatever. One of the things it'll say is Blue Water Super Map. Click on that. You have to be a member, though. Just you no. Know, you have to log in. Or yeah, you got you got to log in to get in there. But you don't you don't have to have a membership. To, you don't get all the information if you don't pay for a membership. Right. But right. you get you get you get Once sixty you percent of it. Yeah. yeah, you get a lot of information for free, an awful lot. But you click on that blue water super map, and it says, then you click another button, and it takes you to it, and it just gives you a map a chart. <laughs> All the way from God, from Hatteras to damn near Savannah, <laughs> and then you can zoom in on that, and it goes out to God, like probably over a thousand fathoms. Which you know, none of us are going out there, but you can zoom in on a certain Talk area, ahead. and it shows you the break real good. And then it also has got various waypoints in there, and the normal stuff that we fish, like the same old uh, steeple or the nipple or the devil's asshole, wherever we're going, they're on there. So you can zoom in on an area that's reachable by your boat. Uh, you're not going to go to Hatteras, so you don't care about looking up there. You can zoom it in something off of Wrightsville Beach or Carolina Beach that you can get to and fish in the day and get back. And then you can pull up all kind of stuff. And I see that for free, I guess you get the, the, the uh, temperature shots. These come from satellites. And I don't know how many times a day, probably four or five times a day, that thing's updated. Uh, the, the big variable in there is clouds. If it's cloudy out there, you're not going to get anything. But a satellite can't take a temperature shot through the clouds. But uh, <coughs> that's, there are four things that I'll look at. One of them is temperature, and I look for two things when I'm looking at temperature. The first thing is, is the area I'm thinking about going, is that water warm enough to hold the species of fish that I'm going after? And for Wahoo, this time of year, we're kind of looking for warm water. Back in July, we were looting for cooler water out there. You're getting a stream out there, and that, you know, that water starts getting up in the high 80s, and those fish are going to move into cooler. But really, Wahoo, <coughs> a, a good range for those is 68, 70 degrees to 84 degrees. That's optimal. That's what Wahoo love. They're going to be in that water. So, okay, if that area is within that range, then I'm great. The next thing that is even more important, I think, is change. Where is there a change? Where does that water jump from, say, 73 degrees? And then a mile further out, it's 78 degrees. That's going to get my attention big time right there. Because bait fish are going to stack up right against that temperature break right there. And a lot of times there's going to be a current rip running right there, and bait fish there, and that's going to bring the predators in. So I look at temperature. Uh, the next thing I look at is salinity. The only thing I'm looking for there is just I want to see one big mass of water against another mass of water. I want to see a change. I don't care what the parts per million are at all. It's going to be 30 something. But I don't care what it is. I just want to see one type of water next to another type of water. The next thing I look at is what they call mixed level depth. Uh, and really, the easiest way to explain that is that's your thermocline. How deep is there a change in the, in the water temperature? 
I want to see a change in that. And if I can find all three of those lining up together, especially if that's over some kind of structure, like some of those drop-offs and ledges out there, I'm real interested in it. And what I'd encourage everybody to do, you've got that go home and tomorrow, whenever you get a chance, go on Frying Pan Tower, look at that Blue Water Super Map. Dave Tilly, the owner of Frying Pan Tower, has got some cool videos, instructional videos, how to, how to read it, what to look for. Pay attention and read those things, look at those videos, play around with it a little bit, um, and then get accustomed to that. And then he offers what he calls Sea View. And this is the paid thing. And I don't know what it costs, $150 a year, $120, something, I don't know. It's, but it's well worth the money. And with that, you're starting to get the, the chlorophyll stuff, you're getting mixed level depth, you're getting currents, you're getting uh, uh, it's just it's all kind of stuff. Uh, cloud free, microwave derived, temperature shot, so if it's a cloudy day, at least you can get a kind of a general idea of what's going on with the temperatures out there. And what I did, let's see if I can find it here real quick. Look at it and uh, play with it. And I know that Dave, Dave lives down here at Carolina Beach. And I know Dave puts on seminars just like we're doing tonight. I think he calls it Finding Fish from Space. If you get a chance to attend one of those, Go. A man of a wealth of knowledge. Knows way more about it than I'll ever know. Um, very good at explaining it. But I brought my computer. I got a couple screenshots here that will show you. Okay. <coughs> Go right here. Now, I wish I had a way to plug this in this TV, but I don't. But. As best as you can see this, you see the different color changes? Okay, you can set that to show me, okay, I want to see between 65 and 90 or 70 or 80 or whatever. You got a lot of different options. This pink thing right here, I don't, no, I don't even know. Can you guys see this at all? Yeah. 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 Okay, this pink thing is a marine protected area. You can troll over it all you want to. You're just not supposed to bottom fish out there. Right there at the corner of it, that would be the same old right there. You come on down in here, you get into the steeples area right here. And can you all see here where this, this water is blue and it's kind of green then dramatically turns to that dark orange? That's a strong temperature break right there. <laughs> it's a fish ought to be on. <laughs> ought to be on. Now keep in mind, if I look at this today and I'm going this weekend, well, that's good that I looked at it today, but where's that water going? That water's going north. By this weekend, this water here is going to be up north of Virginia somewhere. But it's still good to look at it every day if you're planning a trip <coughs> three or four days from now. And just kind of get the idea of where the water is going and what it's doing. <coughs> so, yeah, I want to turn that thing around and get a better look at it. Go ahead. Um... But I encourage you, if Dave ever puts on one of his seminars around here, I know uh, uh, Cape Fear Christian Sportsman puts on what they call Fish Fest every year. It's a big fishing school. I'm sure they'll do it this year. And Dave usually puts on a seminar at that, and he does an excellent job. I think it was this fall, Dave put on a seminar down at Island Tackle one night. Yeah. And he did real good videos, and he took those videos and posted a library on his website. You got a rainy, cold winter day with nothing to do. Sit there and watch his videos, and it's it's as if you're sitting there watching the presentation. I mean, they're absolutely of just a wealth of knowledge. And it's all about figuring out where the water temperatures, where the temperature breaks are. He talks about water salinity talks about chlorophyll levels and mid-layer depth, and it's basically scientific fish finding. And I'll tell you what, I've been fishing my whole life offshore, it works. It does. It absolutely is the Bible. You're right? not just going out there putting lines in the water and wandering around all around the break out there. And at the price of gas, 
if he's charging you $150 for that CV thing, two trips, you've paid for that. If it can zero you in. You've got to learn how to use a certain it area. It does. There's a learning yeah, curve. It to sure it. is. Absolutely. Yep. But if you'll watch those videos and talk to people that have used it over the while, uh, it will really help you. And if you fish offshore consistently, I, I would really endorse it. Uh, okay. That's kind of how I go about looking for fish. And then also, you know, while I'm running out there, keeping my eyes open, not overrunning the fish, not fishing waypoints, but fishing general areas, uh, watching that sonar, watching for bait. If I see bait, work it hard. I don't make just one pass over and come back, you know, maybe three or four passes mm -hmm. over. I'm going to make sure there's nothing there before I leave it. If I mark a good wad of bait down there, I'm going to work the hell out of that until I'm sure there's nothing on it. John, you would mention about marking when you get a strike, <coughs> marking GPS when you get a strike. Yeah, yeah. You, if you get a strike, and, and talking about wahoo fishing, wahoo in the traditional sense of the word, wahoo are not a school in fish like king mackerel are. However, if you catch one wahoo in a certain area, that's telling you that that area has got stuff there, be it bait, temperature, currents, whatever, that's conducive to Wahoo being in that area. So if one's there, chances are there's going to be more. You go over and get a strike, hit your MOB button so you know exactly where to come back over and work that area. When a man and I go out, we'll typically put lines, unless we see something crazy on some of these satellite shots, we'll typically put lines at around 130, 135 feet, which from the actual, what they call the break out there where it starts really dropping off, you know, that's six, seven miles away. And there's a lot of times that we haven't even got to the break. We've never gotten over 150 feet of water because there's fish in there. That's what I say about don't overrun them and mark that spot so you can get back to us. And Lord God, if you see something floating, troll by it. Troll by it. There'll be something under it.